So let's take a real example of a linear interpolation and let's solve it in three different ways. Using hand calculations, using the calculator, and then using Excel. You can use whatever you find easiest, the easiest one, whatever you're more comfortable with, and you'll see some advantages of one over the other. So here we have an example. This is from a steam table. This is not precise, but just it's good enough for our problem, for example. I have a temperature on the left side and I have pressure on the right side. So at 100 Celsius, we have 99 kilopascals of pressure. At 150 Celsius, we have 111 kilopascals. And the question is, at 121 Celsius, what will be my pressure? Okay, so considering a linear interpolation between these two values here, between these discrete values here, what will be the value for the pressure at 121 Celsius? Okay, so you can go back to the video in which we discussed the theory behind this. So on this one, we're just going to solve it, okay, straight off. We know that the slope m is given by y minus yo, that is any two values of y divided by x over x over, right? So in this case here, we can do 111 minus 99. 150 minus 100. So that gives us 12 over 50, which is a slope for this situation here. Now, if I want to know my y, right, a given y, any y, in this case, a y for 121, then what do I need to do? I need to recreate this equation, right? So the y that I'm looking for, minus, minus any y, and I can choose the y I want. I can do 111, that's fine, if I want to. So minus 111 equals the slope that we just found. So 12 minus 50 times the x, right? So the x that I'm looking for and the x that we have. So 111 is 150. So what I'm looking. So this is a so this is a general equation for this line that we um, that we are assuming, right? So what do we know? If we want the 121 value there, that's what I want to plug in there. 121, and then I want to solve for this y. But I could plug any value that I want. Right? I could plug I don't know, 105. Or something like that, right? So that's what we're going to do. So that means that I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to have 121 here, and now I can solve this. I'm going to have that my y equals 111 plus 12 times, oops, 12 over 50 times 121 minus 150. Okay, and this is going to give me y is approximately equal to 104 kilopascals, so 104.04 for doing the decimals as well. And that is the interpolation using the, uh, the mathematical way doing it by hand. So that, that, now let's go ahead and try with the calculator and see what happens. Okay, so let's solve the same problem now with a Casio scientific calculator. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, mode, choose stat, and then note that we have one number two, right, because we want a linear relationship. So that is the A plus BX. And now we come to a little matrix. And on the x part, we're going to put everything that we have for temperature. On the y part, we're going to put what we have for pressure. So we know that we have 100 Celsius, and then we have 150 Celsius. And on the y, when temperature is 100, pressure is 99 equal. And when temperature is 150, pressure is 111. So 111 equal. Perfect. And once I get here, put AC. And then I go shift, stat. See stat number one here, stat. And I want to do a regression, right? A regression, that's number seven. And I want to solve that for y. So I want to solve it for y. And what value do I want to solve it for? Well, I want to solve it for 121. So 121, solve it for y, and I press equal. Okay? If I want to do for a different value, I can do for 110, 105, it doesn't matter. That's where you put your x value right there that you want to solve it for. So hit equal, I should get 104. There you go, 0.04. All right, now onto the spreadsheet. So I have the same temperature values here, the same pressure values here. We're doing the same relationship we did on the calculator and when we do it by hand, right? So what we're trying to find out, let's delete these, let's go again. Okay, we're trying to find out there's a value for y when we have 121. So to do that, what I need to do is pretty much these relationships here all at once. Okay, so I'm going to do yo, which is the um, value that I'm looking for. So I'm going to do um, this guy plus the slope. What is the slope? y2 minus y1. So y2 minus y1, parenthesis, divided by x2 minus x1 x x2 minus x1 and then i need to multiply by the difference in the x that i'm looking for the 121 and the um, xo that i look i used so i used uh this one so i need to use the same thing right so this guy minus this guy i need to get 104.04 there you go the advantage of this is you can automate this but it's generally not worth it unless you can input all the tables the property tables into excel that's going to be useful. But the advantage of this is when you have to do it for several different properties. So here I have 
um, the temperature, and then I have properties of air, right? So I have density, I have uh, the dynamic viscosity, I have a uh, pregnant number, have heating capacity, CP, and so forth. So what I can do is I can do the same thing here. Right? So I'm going to do y plus the slope. The slope is this guy minus this guy divided by this guy minus this guy. And then I multiply that by the difference in x. Uh, there's a parenthesis missing here. Difference in x, right? So it's this guy minus this x here. And that gives me that thing. What I can do now if I have several of these is I can go ahead and make all these, I can hit um, F4, right, F4, and I can make all these uh, constant. And what I want to do is I want to make all the ones that are for A constant, because this is not changing. What's going to be changing is everything is for D. So you see you have, these are all for A. I hit, oops, and I hit F4, and then they're fixed. And what I can do now is I can just do this, and I have the values for all the other properties. And just to check I did everything right, I have a little if condition here. Yeah, they're all okay. okay so this is a, the advantage of using the spreadsheet is that you can do several of these at once as opposed to one at a time. Then obviously doing it manually is ideal for you, at least at the beginning, for you to understand what you're doing and why the calculation is done like so. The calculator is good once you have the habit of doing it and have to do several just to understand how to do it in the calculator. And then spreadsheet is good when you have a lot of properties you need to determine for a certain for a certain temperature or for a given other property and you want to find, I don't know, enthalpy, internal energy, specific volume, and all that. So you can do all at once instead of doing one at a time. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you're always up to date with the latest videos, problem solving, and theory being published.